Hey Rocky fans, Rocky Balboa 101 here, again with another Rocky movie review. We're tackling Rocky Balboa today, the 2006 film which was written and directed by Sylvester Stallone. This movie, it's about 16 years since Rocky retired, and he owns a little restaurant. Adrian has passed. Um, he doesn't have a great relationship with his son. Uh, his son pretty much feels like he's living in his shadow. Uh, Mason Dixon is the current champion, and everyone's saying he's fighting kind of like bum fighters. And so there's a computer fight that happens between Rocky and Mason Dixon, which Rocky wins, and that gets Rocky back into where he wants to have one more boxing match, and Mason Dixon wants to fight him, so they have an exhibition fight, and Rocky loses the fight, but he still is the Philadelphia's champion. I mean, the fans just love him. Um, let's talk about the film. I absolutely loved Rocky Balboa. I thought it was a perfect closure to the Rocky series. There were so many elements of this movie that were good. Um, Adrian passing, I thought um, S Stallone did a good job uh, in having Talia Shire not reprise her role as Adrian because it left Rocky as low as he could be. Um, I know Adrian was originally supposed to appear in the movie, but Sly wanted to get Rocky down to his lowest, and I thought he accomplished that by not having her in the film. Um, you know, Rocky, he's all about the past in this movie. He always gets together with Polly on the anniversary of Adrian's passing, and they go to all the Rocky locations uh, that him and Adrian shared. It's a very touching movie. Um, and um, you have Rocky's son... He kind of feels like he's living in the shadow of Rocky, like he can't accomplish anything, and he kind of blames his dad for that, you know, which that they don't really have a great relationship. But Rocky ends up running into Little Marie from the first Rocky film, and he kind of becomes a father figure to her, and she's not doing that great either, so he kind of helps her out in her son's steps. Um, Mason Dixon is the current champion, and people do not like him, and it's not because he's a bad boxer, it's because they're saying he's fighting nobody, so this computer fight gets put together between um, Rocky and Mason Dixon, which both of them in their prime fight, and that was really cool in the movie, I like that, and Rocky wins the fight, um, so that's kind of what gets, you know, Mason Dixon and Rocky wanting to get back together, into a, or get into a boxing match, um, you know, Rocky, he's got like stuff in the basement, as he likes to say, he's got to get it out, you know, he, he feels like he's missing something in his life, um, and <clears throat> there's a character called Steps, he's, yeah, I didn't really care for him, it's Marie's son, and Rocky helps him out too, um, Polly works at the meat plant still, but he ends up getting let go with the times, I guess times are changing, and in the end, you know, Rocky and his son reconcile, you know, Rocky gives him a great speech out in front of, uh, Rocky's restaurant, Adrian's, uh, which is the, he named after Adrian, obviously, he runs an Italian eatery, and the speech is, is you know, it's not about as hard as you hit, it's about as hard as you can get hit and keep moving forward. Um, this movie has so many great speeches, you know, and there's so many nostalgic parts to the movie. It was just an all-around great film. Um, I'll give you a fun fact about the movie. Um, this is the movie that has the most realistic fight scene, in my opinion, and it's pretty much because Rocky and um, Antonio Tarver, who played Dixon, they actually sparred in this movie. Um, the, there are several times in this movie during the boxing match, as you see here, they actually hit each other, and <clears throat> when Rocky gets knocked down the second time in this movie, which already has gone by, um, he actually got knocked out by Dixon. That was real. Mason Dixon, or Antonio Tarver actually knocked Sylvester Stallone out, so this was very realistic, and Sly wanted it that way, and I thought it worked out, you know, I thought the boxing match looked very realistic. Maybe it wasn't as entertaining as the other Rockies, but it was definitely the most realistic. Um, Bill Conti returns to do the score of the movie, absolutely awesome. He just pretty much um, revamps all the old Rocky music, and you can tell throughout the whole movie they replay most of all of it, so that's really cool. Um, Rocky Balboa ended up making $70 million at the U.S. box office and $155 million worldwide. This was Sylvester Stallone's biggest box office success since Cliffhanger. Um, the movie only was $24 million to make, and critics loved the movie. I mean, it did overall everywhere um, worldwide, all over the place. It did very well. Um, I love how the movie ended. 
Stallone, or Rocky does not win. It's a split decision, but it goes to Tarver. That was a good move. They have an alternate ending in the DVD where Rocky wins, and I'm glad they didn't go that route because it was more realistic that Rocky lost, but also it wasn't about winning to him. It was about going the distance and respect, and he got it. I mean, at the end of the movie, the, the crowd still loves Rocky. They're cheering him on, and you can tell that Rocky, he totally appreciates it. And then the end of the movie is at Rocky, at Adrian's grave, and He's like, we did it, Adrian, we did it, and then he walks away, and it was so, so perfect, such a perfect ending to the series, and this movie was very touching for me. I would say this is the most emotional Rocky for me. I got teary-eyed like four times when I saw this in the movie theater. Um, that doesn't usually happen with me with any of the Rocky films, but I feel this is the most emotional of all of the films. I don't, I just love it so much. Um... Let's talk a little bit about the acting. Sylvester Stallone did awesome. His best acting of Rocky since the first movie, in my opinion. He was all he you, he could he was channeling the Rocky one Rocky. I thought he did so good. Got to give him credit for that. Uh, Burt Young and Tony Burton return as Polly and Duke. These are the only three characters to be in all six movies. They both did really well too. You could tell that they're older, but they still did very good acting jobs. I thought um, Milo. Venta, whatever his name is from Heroes, um, he did very good. I liked that Slack cast him instead of Sage Stallone to play Rocky Jr. I thought he did a very good job of being Rocky Jr. I really liked that. Um, Geraldine Hughes, I believe is her name, played Little Marie. She did decent. Um, you could tell the movie was different not having Adrian and having a different female lead, but I thought she did a decent job. I don't want to take anything away from her. She did what she needed to do. I thought she did a very good job. Uh, the character Steps was dumb, I have to say. Um, I know, I don't know, it was good that Rocky was helping him out, but I think that character could have been completely deleted out of this entire movie, and the movie still would have been good. They should have just dropped that part, in my opinion. Um, Antonio Tarver, he did okay as Mason Dixon. Again, just like Tommy Morrison as Tommy Gunn, this was not a strong villain for the movie, or antagonist, I guess is what you'd like to call it. Um, it just was, you know, he didn't have, you know, you don't remember him as a character as you would like Clover Lang or Ivan Drago or Apollo Creed. So, I thought he just did okay. Um, so, anyway, I rank Rocky Balboa as my third favorite in the series. Uh, so, right now, backwards, it goes four, three, five, and then six. Rocky Balboa for me. It was very hard for me to decide if I liked Rocky... Balboa better or Rocky 2 better, and when I do my Rocky 2 review, you'll see why I put it just a slightly ahead of Rocky Balboa, but anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll have the other two up uh, sooner or later. See you later.